Hi Floss Tube. my name is Sarah. Welcome to my channel, The Traveling Stitcher. If you're new here, thank you for joining me. I hope you'll find some things that you like and maybe you are stitching some of the same things I am. If you are, let me know. If you're coming back, thanks for coming back. It's been over three months since my last video. Um, and it's funny because I was just watching it because I don't even remember what I was really talking about. It was right before Christmas and I was, the plan was that I was going to come back on the last day of the year or on January 1st. And obviously that didn't happen. Today's March 26th. So that's, that's pretty um, sad, I guess. But regardless, I'm here and I wanted to um, try to get a video up just to kind of showcase some of the things that I've been working on. I think I finally have a plan and so far so good. I've been following it for the most part. So I'm going to share that with you uh, in case any of you are like me where you know, I know a lot of um, floss tubers are, they're working full time. I'm working full time. Um, I do travel a lot for work. That's the name, the traveling stitcher. So sometimes it can be hard to find time to stitch. And, you know, a year ago when I first discovered floss tube, I was what we refer to as a monogamous stitcher. I would I was just stitching one project and all of you corrected me. And now I'm stitching, I think, I have a total of 13 whips that I'm working on right now, but I just find that I needed to find some sort of way to um, at least stitch, you know, something different each week. Anyways, all that, I'll get to all of that. Uh, I know there's whip go out there. I've looked at that a little bit. Don't think that that would work out for me, but I don't know. Maybe it's something I'll try in the future. That's the beauty of this community. We learn so much from each other and get some different ideas of what everybody is doing. So anyways, I'm rambling. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do in this video. I have stuff scattered all over the place and I'm going to do my best to make everything make sense and somewhat enjoyable. I do look at this um, channel as a way for me too to also kind of go back and see how far I've come. Uh, hopefully I can look at this video a year from now without cringing too much, but also be able to say, oh wow, like I did make a lot of progress on those things. The other thing I would like to say is that um, on my last video, I had mentioned that not a lot of people know that I do these videos in my family. And I had, I had finally confessed to my mother that I make these and my mom is um, dealing with some health issues right now. So she, uh, you know, is pretty much homebound and um, I'm going to use this video as a way to show you mom all of the different things that I'm working on uh, as well as some of the projects that I have kind of, I call them projects in waiting, right? Things that um, hopefully I'll be able to work on you know, in the near future. So I guess you could say to a certain extent, I have something on my glasses, that uh, I'm gonna dedicate this video to my mother and she can see all the different things that I'm that I'm working on. So let's go, let's start. Uh, like I said, I've got everything everywhere and I, I don't know where I should start first. How about I start with what I've decided to do as far as planning? So a lot of people in the flash tube community use the book of days and I really had no desire um, or much interest in the book of days. It was intriguing to me, but I didn't think you know much of it until I was at uh, one of my local needle stores, the Crafty U. And she had one sitting on the desk and I said, oh wow, look at that, it's a book of days. She's like, yes, it's my last one. So guess who got the last one? That would be me. And now here I am buying stickers and colored markers and marking up my book of days. And when I kind of look back on it, um, it's fun. You know, it's something fun that I have been enjoying doing. And I look at January and I look at February. It's like, oh, I, it looks like the visual anyways, it looks like I've done quite a bit. And then I kind of get into March. I'm like, ooh, March. Anyways, this is my plan. Um, I, as I had mentioned, I am working on a total of, I think, 13 projects. 
And um, I also do like to crochet. And one of the things I noticed last year is because I was doing so much cross stitching, I didn't do a whole lot of crocheting. So I decided to kind of implement that into my plan. Because I've got the third, let me count these, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, yes, 13. Because I had these 13 projects and I noticed that my first five floss tube videos that I did were really spaced about two months apart, give or take. I'm like, all right, well, if I have 13 projects then, and I work on two a week, that's every six weeks, and then I can incorporate a week, a week and a half of maybe some um, crocheting. So my new goal um, is as I progress through the year, that between now and the next time you see me, which hopefully will be in eight weeks, I will have gone through a complete rotation of all the projects that I'm working on, plus um, have had the opportunity to work a little bit on some of my crochet projects. And I'm gonna, I'll share those at the end of the video in case you're interested. I'll show you what I'm working on. I'm not gonna bring out the yarn and all that stuff, so. All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, but anyways, here's my book of days and um, I just jot down every day what I worked on. Sometimes if I'm using um, Markup RXP, I'll, I'll write in the number of stitches that I did according to the app, but I don't sit and count stitches when I'm not using that. So sometimes I just write in there, but I also started to write in other things like what days I'm traveling or um, I am trying to exercise a little bit more. So it's almost like a little journal. It's almost like a little visual journal of my year, if that makes any sense. All right, let's just jump into this. Um, I'm going to start with the projects that I'm working on. And then when I'm done with that, I am going to share all of the projects, my projects in waiting, as I refer to them as. And if you've watched a previous video, chances are you've seen those before. But I kind of wanted to do a um, complete review, like an overhaul, right? A restart, reboot, whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Now, all my projects are off to the left. So you can see me turning around. Um, you're going to hear drawers opening, bags opening and closing and all that stuff. So if you're, I, I could never understand why people made such a big deal of that. Like, um, oh, sorry for the zipper, sorry for this. Until someone mentioned like, well, if you're wearing headset or earbuds or something. So just so you know, if you're wearing a headset, if you're wearing earbuds, turn the volume down. So that, if that's gonna bother you. <laughs> all right, I'm rambling. First project. This will be um, a week. My week run one rotation is going to be the Jackrabbit. And let me open my book of days um, and the three little pigs. So when I was kind of coming up with my plan, I do I'm, I do a lot of different kind of stitching, uh, which is another great thing. I've, I've really enjoyed kind of looking at the projects that I'm working on. I'm like, wow, it's so different than it was even a year ago. Um, but I do have some full coverage pieces and my full coverage pieces, um, you know, those are just going to take longer. So each week when I'm working on two projects, I try to have one project that's smaller and that typically is a goal project, meaning I would like to have that done this year. And then the other project that I work on the same week is a full coverage project, which I don't really have a major goal to finish this year. And I guess in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well then I have about six, right? Cause it's about half of them, six projects um, that I wanna finish this year. I feel like I'm not making any sense, but I hope I, hope I am. All right, enough of that. The first one that I'm working on is the Jackrabbit. I love this, super cute. Uh, this is part of the series A Year in Woods by Cottage Garden Samplings. They have all sorts of different um, patterns as well. And I do have, I think, two more of these that I really like. So I will show you 
where I'm at with that. I do like to work on scroll frames. This is what I initially preferred to work on, but I've since started to use Q-snaps and even some hoops. So um, I'm doing different things there, which, which I like. So I think the last time I did a video, and I don't know because I didn't go all the way back to that video, but I really just had done the darker areas of the rabbit. And I have worked on all of this um, gray part. So this, I am getting ready to work on this in about two weeks again on my rotation. But so I'll, I'll put some more stitches. So this is being stitched on an Ada. It's a 20 count. So this was one of those projects that was kind of a big step for me because I was always working on like the 14 count white Ada um, in the past with some of the cross stitching that I've done. So this was a, you know, a change for me. Love the, the different colors. Got it from my local LNS. 20 count Ada um, color is Havana. I'm using a DMC floss. And this is, I, I know it's one strand. And I think it's over one, one over one. And again, if you've seen past videos, um, I had done two strands in here and I tore it out and then I started stitching it again and I did two strands again, kept making the mistake, did two strands again. Anyways, long story short, after making the same mistake three times, I just decided to leave it. So his little feet look a little bit darker than the rest of them, but that's okay. So. This is a fun one. I do enjoy working on that and I do enjoy working on the different kind of fabric. So that is my first project. So my week one rotation, I'll start working on the Jack Rabbit because it is a goal of mine to finish that this year. In the week one rotation, the second project I'm gonna be working on is um, a full coverage. It's called The Three Little Pigs. So I'm gonna show that to you on my, um, tablet because it is in Markup RXP, which I do enjoy using. If you're looking for something um, like an app, this is um, Markup RXP on my tablet. But anyways, look how cute that is. The three little pigs. I have a very, very small start with this particular one. Um, where is it? Oh, it's in here because I had taken it off the hoop. So. I do like to work on um, fabric that is gridded, whether I do it or I buy it that way. Um, obviously I did this. When I first decided to work on this project, I did purchase the pre-gridded fabric, but I was concerned with that fabric that when you get up into some of these white areas that you might see that. So I just decided to buy new fabric and just kind of grit it myself. And I'm gonna probably, oh, there's my dog, grit as I go. So um, that is the progress that I've made so far on that one. And this is so very distracting, I know, but. Now this is being stitched on an 18 count antique white Ada. So 18 count Ada. Okay, so week one is the jackrabbit. Focus on the jackrabbit um, because I want to finish that, but also get some stitches on three little pigs. My week two rotation is, I'm going to call it my princess rotation, and I'm going to work on my full coverage piece, Snow White Finds the Cottage, as well as another project. So let's do this one first. Oh, I should show you that. Um, pattern. I'm not going to take it out, so hopefully there's no glare. This is one of those Disney um, collections, the Dream Disney Dreams collection, Snow White Discovers the Cottage by Thomas Kincaid. I got this on eBay from somebody about a year ago. Uh, so this, this is my first full coverage. Um, that I started and I really, I do like stitching it. I'll just show you. It's hard to do this when you have a scroll frame, but I think most of this is what I've done since my last video, which given the fact that my video is three months ago, I wouldn't say that's too impressive, but still, 
I'll show you a little bit closer so you can see that. And I do enjoy working on this. So now this one, um, you know, the kit came with all the floss and it came with the fabric. I decided to um, purchase the gridded fabric. And because the colors are so much darker on this, I wasn't too worried. I know you, I know they are supposed to wash out, but I was so worried on that three little pigs that it wouldn't. And you go through all that trouble to stitch and then you see the lines. So I wasn't gonna um, risk it. This is the one uh, piece that I really started to experiment a little bit more on the different kinds of like starting and ending a thread, like the pin stitch and, um, you know, ending the thread on the top of the fabric versus flipping it over and running it through the bottom of the fabric. So that has been um, a nice learning opportunity for me. So week two is Snow White Finds a Cottage and then Alice in Wonderland. So Alice in Wonderland is... I have to flip through here a little bit more. One of those soda stitches. And I really do enjoy working on that. I am using on Alice in Wonderland a, um, where am I? 14 count opal white Ada. I'm gonna show you if I can find it, what it actually, oh, oh it's right there with the very first one. Couldn't have gotten more obvious. Um, but this is what that's going to look like. I enjoy doing this one because, um, when I am traveling, if I decide that I do want to take a piece with me, I can I know, just fall off my table. Um, but you know, cause I need, I have, obviously I have glasses on, but I need magnification cause I can't see very well, uh, when I'm stitching a board somewhere. I thought I had a board somewhere to put behind it. How about I just, well, let's just do it. Anyways, that's what I have finished. Oh, that's the back. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's what I finished in Alice in Wonderland. That's my um, big bad dog, Augie. So anyways, this has been a lot of fun to stitch. I have the Alice in Wonderland. I have the um, Soda Stitch Snow White. And I have the Sleeping Beauty. So with this one, this is a goal. So my week two rotation, Snow White Finds the Cottage and Alice in Wonderland. Snow White is not a goal to finish. This is. So when week two rolls around, this is the one that I would stitch first because I want to try to get it done this year. Whereas Snow White is one, if I have some time and I can do it, I will. Anyways, all right, moving along. Week um, three, oh my goodness. So this was a new start for me and I'm so excited to be doing this. Um, if you've watched um, Chris stitching in the, stitching in the burrow. She is doing mama kissing Santa, mommy kissing Santa, mama, one of them, one of the two. What is it? Mommy kissing Santa. And, um, when I first came across her channel, um, she does a lot of full coverage. I don't, she is amazing to me, but anyways, she showed this and it's a feature product project for her. She works on um, a lot and she's got so much done. I'm so jealous. Wait till you see how much I have done. It's kind of sad. But anyways, this is a mommy kissing Santa. And this came from the, I got it at the cross stitch studio. Uh, I am working it on just like Chris is the 18 count Ada, white Ada using DMC two strands of floss um, over, well, it's Ada, so, but <laughs> look how sad. There's my sad little start. So same thing, I decided not to get the pre-gridded fabric, but I really, I do like working on, on something that's gridded. It just helps me um, so I don't lose count. And I try to focus on, you know, one square at a time, but once I have that, floss I just keep going as much as I can with that floss 
before I go to a different color, if that makes any sense. But that is the little fin or start that I have. The other thing that I thought um, I would do is I'm looking at my, you know, my plan. So that, that would be a good example. Mommy Kissing Santa is week three along with another one is called Ebenezer. Mm -hmm. Ebenezer is a smaller one. And let me find that um, picture so I can show you what it even looks like. I love this. I love the Scrooge Christmas Carol. I should, yeah, Christmas Carol. But this is Ebenezer. And it just says, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. He knew how to keep Christmas well. God bless us, everyone. So on my week three rotation, I would work on this one and I would work on a full coverage. I know I'm not going to finish that full coverage this year. So, but I can finish this. So this is what I kind of start the week off in. And then later on during the week, I do that because I want to finish this. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, um, we have a little tower and it's going to fall over. For that one, this is what I have finished. Now with this one, let me see what I'm working on this. I'm pretty sure this is a linen. It is. Okay. So if you watched my last video, uh, it was only like 15 minutes long right before Christmas. And I showed two, I think two pieces that I had finished. And one of them was this little um, reindeer. Um, it was a real small piece, but it was my first time stitching on linen. It was kind of my practice piece before I got something a little bit bigger. Um, so this is my bigger one on linen and I'm really enjoying it. I never thought that I would. I think I actually have videos of me in the past saying I probably would never stitch on linen and look at me. Anyways, this is a 32 count linen. Picture this plus. Uh, Ren is the color and there you have it. So that's my week three rotation along with Mommy Kiss and Santa Claus. Okay, week four. And by the way, Mommy Kiss and Santa and that Ebenezer was a new start for me. Whereas all the other ones that I've talked to you about or showed you so far, they I had already started those last year, even if it was just a little bit. So my week four rotation is the Summer Quaker and Poltergeist Pirate. So let me put this back in here before... Um, I screw anything up. The Summer Quaker is something that I saw a lot of people on Floss Tube doing, and I got it, but I was really intimidated by it. I've never done something like that before. And am I doing this on? No, this I'm doing this on a Lugana. So you'll probably recognize it. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic. Uh, the first time I saw this, it was the Huga Stitcher who is doing it. And I thought it was really pretty. This is one of those pieces that um, I haven't gotten very far in at all. But it just, in my opinion, when I think about what I was stitching a year ago, it's like, wow, you've, I just, I don't want to say, oh, Sarah, you've come so far. But <laughs> again, a year ago, a little over a year ago, I was only stitching in 14 count white Ada. So to stitch on anything else is a kind of a big deal for me. So that's what I got done on that particular one. I really, really enjoyed stitching on it. Again, it's a 32 count Lugana and it's called Vintage Stormy Night. I am using DMC on all of that. And it's two strands of floss over two, um, two over two, two strands of floss over two strands. I think that's how you see it. I love this fabric. I'm really happy about that fabric choice. Okay, so now this, let me see, is this a, um, okay, this is not, like I'm not worried about finishing this this year. This isn't, like I don't have a goal to finish this this year. The other thought I had, I think I started to say this a few minutes ago and then I got distracted, shocking. Um, 
if I'm looking at my plan, and let's just say as an example, I finish Ebenezer, all right? That's the one that I just showed you. Um, if I finish Ebenezer, then my thought is I've got one of three choices. Number one, I can replace it with another project, um, so a new start. Number two, I could just use that week's rotation to completely focus on the full coverage that I was working um, on that same week. Um, or number three, I don't even know what number three is. Oh, I could work on one of the other. I could work on one of the other projects. I'd have a goal to finish. Does that make sense? So just kind of keeping my options open. We'll see what happens if I even get anything finished. All right, so what did I just show you? Just so just summer Quaker. Oh, Poltergeist Pirate. Oh my goodness. So the Poltergeist Pirate is so fun. This is from, um, actually, let me see. I think I have the, yeah, I do have it in here. Glendon Place. That's a cute this is. I like that so much. I think that's so cute. Um, I was able to, to load it up to my Markup RXP. I am doing this on an 18 count Ada. And I was at another, I'm in Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, and, and right around me, I have access pretty easily to three different local LNSs. And I was at one, um, Clear Stitching Post in Vermilion, Ohio. And she showed me somebody who had done this and they did it on the, the Ada. So I was really, really impressed with that. So I decided that I would do the same. I love the fabric that I got for that. Look at that. So I got my little pirate flag done. This is so much fun. So again, if I didn't already say it, this is an 18 count Ada. The fabric color, it's called, I think it's called gray notes. Like I got this and then sometimes it says, you know, like I have a question mark here, 18 count Michelle gray notes. And I don't know which, what's which. So it's an 18 count Ada Michelle gray notes, I guess. And there it is. I really like this. This is fun. So I'm looking forward to getting more progress done on that. Um, Where am I? Okay. So that was week four rotation, the Summer Quaker and the Poltergeist Pirates. Neither one of those do I have a goal to finish this year. Uh, okay, so week five, my rotation is going to be um, a Christmas deer and portrait of Santa. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to show you this um, portrait of Santa, but we're going to wait. I'm going to show you the Christmas deer first. If you follow me on Instagram, you um, you would see these things too, because I do try to post my, oops, sorry. <laughs> I do try to um, post my prog progress. So this one is called a Christmas deer. I call it Prancer. It's so pretty. I did get the chance to see this finished by somebody. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I just purchased this because I saw it. Yeah, I did. I saw it on the stitchery and I liked it. And it wasn't until after I purchased it, I actually saw people stitching it. So there's a couple things about this one. I'm going to take this out. I don't like these at all. Um, because look what happened to me anyway. I don't know. I'm, I just... I get all of these things hanging off and I just think it's a mess. So I might take these off and put them in like floss bags or something like that because this drives me crazy having these just flapping around. Any of you, this is Luca S by the way, this pattern, A Christmas Deer by Luca S. Um, if any of you do anything with Luca S because I know that they, they do, I think all of their floss like that. Let me know what you think because I'm curious if you like that or not. Anyways, it's an 18 count Ada. Um, and it's, yeah, it was a total kit. So the fabric and all of the um, floss is what, um, what I'm using. And I think the last time, I mean, I did a lot of this, which, 
you know, it's almost the same color, so it wasn't hard to do it, but I'm looking forward to getting a little bit further down to get more into the, um, the deer. I like it when you're doing a lot of the same color, um, in one end because you're not flipping, you know, like changing your floss that much, but at the same time it can get a little bit tedious. So, but I just think that's a really pretty one. So I do enjoy doing that one. Okay. I'm so excited to show you a portrait of Santa. So if you have, um, I, I will do this better next time because now I know I'm like disappearing while I get things out of the drawer here. If you've watched past videos, I've shared this before. And I think in one of them, I even made a comment like I had no business buying this. I bought this 20 some years ago when I first started cro um, cross stitching. You know, and many, like many of you, I, I, you know, started to cross stitch, you know, way back when, and then I took a, a long break from it and kind of rediscovered it in the last year or so. Oh, my dog is annoying me. But anyways, I bought this one. I'm so grateful that I didn't get rid of it. Um, look at, oh my goodness. I love this. A portrait of Santa. I've seen it on Flash 2 before, finished, and I'm so excited. I am stitching this on, what am I stitching this on? A 25 count Lugana, mushroom Lugana. Excuse me, I am using DMC two over two. I am very proud of myself. <laughs> Look. Oh, can you see it? Oh, yep. Yeah. I can't see if you could see. There you go. The lighting is not doing it justice. But every time I look at this, I'm like, wow, I, I did a good job. I am so excited. Every time I know when that rotation comes around, and I get so excited. I worked on this quite a bit over Christmas, actually. And I had to take out a big section of it. It was annoying to me. But um, again, I'm just kind of learning how to, um, I'm learning how to do this, right? I'm learning, you know, doing sections or, or um, gridding, you know, I'm still trying to figure kind of out my way of doing it, but I just absolutely, I'll show it to you one more time because I'm so happy with it. <laughs> I just think he looks so good and I can't wait to finish that one. So is he a goal? He is a goal. Portrait of Santa Oops. is a goal for me this year to have it done by the end of the year. Uh, what's the date? Okay. Oh, there's a chance, right? Portrait of Santa. Okay. Let's see here. That is Portrait of Santa is my week five rotation. So the Christmas deer and Portrait of Santa. I would start the week off with Portrait of Santa since it's my focus and I want to finish it. And then, or sometimes I look at my week and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be traveling. So I'm going to be gone for a couple days. I don't always take cross stitch with me. Sometimes I'm just too busy or too tired by the time I get to my hotel to do anything. So I just kind of look at the week ahead and say, okay, well, you know, I definitely want to work in Portrait to Santa. So the days that I know that I'm home and around, I, I focus on that. And if I can get some stitches in on a Christmas deer, I do that too. Okay, so my last cross stitch um, whip. Oh no, it's not. No, it's not. Okay, never mind. Forget, forget that. My next, <laughs> my next week six rotation. Um, one new start, which I was really excited to start it, and one I had started it a little bit last year. And this one, if you watch Vanna Pfeiffer, she's done this multiple times. It's just a portrait of Jesus. And I actually am stitching this a little bit more this week because it's um, getting up to Good Friday and Easter. 
and um, I'm really enjoying this one. Now this one I didn't grid, so it's been a lot of counting. I haven't made too many mistakes, so I'm happy about that. It looks a little wonky right now because I was focusing on part of his face. I was focusing on kind of like this area and then he decided to come over and start like up at his forehead and, and kind of move down. So he, he looks a little um, weird. I don't know if I should say that because it's Jesus, but I really do love this and I do like stitching on it. So I'm, I'm excited to get this one done and it is a focus for me this year. So I do enjoy working on that. All right, let me get what is challenging and I'm sure you all understand because you've all done the same thing. Let me show you these colors. When you're working on something, oh goodness gracious. Um, the Portrait of Santa was a lot like this too. When you're working on those flesh tones and you have so many colors that are so similar. Like look at these two right here. <laughs> That's always fun. I guess the good thing about it is if you make a mistake, you're like, mm, I don't think I need to rub that up. Okay, so that is Jesus. And the week that I work on that, I also do, I have a new start and I'm very excited about this. If you've ever seen Long Dog Samplers, I um, like to watch um, Lisa with Lost in Stitches. I haven't seen her in a while and I hope she's okay, but she is doing this one. It's the, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, just so you know. I think it's called the Quinto, Quinto Acuto, Acuto, or the Pointed Fifth from Long Dog Samplers. I'm trying to like make it so you can see it. That's good enough. Okay. Um, and Lisa was doing it on a, a um, real pretty blue. I went a little bit lighter than what she's doing. I don't have a lot done on it, but I do have that. So upper... Um, left hand corner is where I started it. So now this is a massive piece. Let me show you this. Look how big this is. Okay. Um, I am working on, I'm working on a Q snap on this one. So I'm struggling with all of the excess fabric. And I know that you can get, and I might need to go up to Crafty U because they have them, those um, grime guards, I think they're called. So I might need to do that just because sometimes I feel like I'm trying to stitch and the, the fabric's getting in the way and all that good stuff. So, um, by the way, Jesus is stitched on, it's a kit, it's 14 count Ada on that one. Um, I'm doing the, the, Quinto Acuto on 18 count white Ada and white color floss because I'm going to do all the same color and I decided to go with this really pretty blue. I had to go to like six different stores to get them all and I still don't think I have enough. 820. Look how pretty that blue is. I don't know if the light doesn't do it justice but trust me it's pretty. Okay. Okay. Still making a mess. Um, so week six rotation is Jesus and Quinto Acuto. Now my last project. Yikes. Okay. So <laughs> I'm all over the place. I knew this was going to happen, but hopefully you're okay with that. And you're just stitching away and just glancing occasionally. Um, Huga Stitches. Um, I can't remember her name. I watch her videos all the time. I'm so Samantha. There it goes. And her friend Erica are doing a um, Year of the Dragon Sale. And <laughs> I'd like to start it, but I am waiting for fabric. So there's a little bit of a story to this one. If you've looked at past videos, you saw that I, let me show you what it is, that I started, oh shoot. <laughs> you saw that I started to stitch this. Um, this came from Artisy. 
This is the mini dragon. They have another one just like this, but it includes the background. I bought the pattern that didn't include the background and I purchased a really pretty fabric um, from my local LNS. Um, I didn't like it. After I started stitching on it, I didn't like it. So I put an order in and I can't remember the name of the company now. Um, and I knew, I knew that it was like a, about a 12 week wait and I'm coming towards the end of that 12 weeks, I think. I'm probably on week nine or 10 now. So hopefully I'm gonna be getting that fabric and I'll be able to restart the dragon because I tore everything out. I, when I say I tore everything out, um, there wasn't much to tear out. The challenge with this piece is that it's confetti heavy so, but I really do want to do it because I've seen it done and it's so pretty. So I hope that, um, I hope that the next fabric that I get is going to be something that I like. I almost regret not doing the, the full coverage one that included the background as well, because I wonder if that almost would have been easier to do, if that makes any sense. Now I am going to show this to you because it's just aesthetically pleasing, I think, but these are all the colors for that, um, that dragon. And I just think they're super pretty. Rainbow dragon. So you can go to the Artisy site or you can go to the Artisy, um, I think there's a Facebook page and you could just like search for rainbow dragon. You can see it finished and it's so, so pretty. Okay, so that's it. Those are all of my whips. Um, Two projects a week times six weeks is 12 projects. Then I have on the seventh week, the dragon. So the seventh week and the eighth week, I'll do the dragon in the seventh week. And then the, the next part of the seventh week um, and all of the eighth week, I plan on working on a crochet project so that I can kind of pick up that crochet again. And since we're just talking about it, I'll just show you really quick what I want to work on. Um, again, I'm just going to show the picture. I won't pull out the project and all that other stuff. Um, I actually just started it this week because it's the, it's that week. But anyways, if you are a crocheter, I really like the crochet village and she made these really pretty stockings. And I decided that I would like to make a stocking for myself and for my husband. So I bought the, um, the pattern and I bought the yarn for it. And I start, just started it the other day and I've got the little toe done and that's it. So this is kind of what I want to work on um, throughout the year. But also I really like to do amigurumi. And for Christmas, my daughter bought me this little book. Um, and there's lots of really cute things in here that I would like to do. And then there's another um, crochet amigurumi um, YouTube and I can't remember what her name is and I, I didn't feel like pulling it out today, but maybe when I start working on it, I will. But my, my daughter who bought me this book bought me the, the yarn for it and it's these super cute little mice that I'm gonna do. So anyways, that's that's all of that. So that's kind of my um, my plan for the year. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm hoping that it helps me to make some really good progress this year so that if I look back and I can look at some of the projects, I'm like, wow, you stuck to it and, and you got some stuff done. Now what I'm going to do is just share a couple um, things that I've purchased. And actually, no, I'm not. I, I, I am, but in a minute. Um, I'm going to pull out again all of my projects in waiting. So these are projects that I have purchased. And along with many of you, I kind of had a goal this year of trying not to make too many more purchases because heaven knows I have enough stuff in my um, magical drawer over here to get me through the next several years of stitching. But you know what? It is, um, it's fun to, uh, to make the purchases. It's all part of the hobby, right? Okay, so the first thing I'll share, I'm gonna go through these really quick just so you see them. These are projects that aren't kitted yet. They're just the patterns, but I got these from Keepsakes. It's a series of little ornaments. 
little Christmas trees. Okay. Uh, I have completed the Chubby Bunny. I showed that in my last video. And I really like that series. So I got the Chubby Bird. I would like to purchase the Chubby Fox because that looks really cute. Um, I purchased, um, what is this? Lavender and Lace. This really pretty Santa. That'll be something that comes down the um, pike there and a couple ornaments. The other thought that I did have is on those, those rotations where I have a goal to finish a certain item, I had said to you, like, I have three choices at that point. Maybe I'd start something new and maybe I would do something small, like an ornament. Um, oh, and I showed you the, um, the jackrabbit part of the cottage garden series. Well, I also have the reindeer and the fox and the swans. Originally, um, when I first discovered these, I was like, oh, maybe I'll get all of them. So there's a different animal for every month. I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I think I changed my mind. Uh, I like turtles. And I found this a couple months ago when I was traveling. And there was a um, needle shop store. So it is this Plum Street Samplers, the tortoise, tortoise, tortoise tower. Um, Pam at Just Keep Stitching. I can't remember if she just showed this or if she had stitched it. Oh my gosh, but I saw this and I loved it. Reindeer, reindeer stables. Isn't that cute? This will be up high on the list of things that I want to do. And then before I found Poltergeist Pirates, um, I had discovered this one from Glendon, Glendon Place. What is this called? Murky Manor. This one I'm 50-50 on. I'm kind of like if I did the um, Poltergeist Pirates, I don't know. I might not do this one. Or I might. I'm not sure. So there's those. Those are all like I would still have to buy the, um, the fabric, the floss, and everything like that. But I have a whole stash that's fully kitted or they're kits. So, of course, they're fully kitted. Um, that I have available to me as well that I'll share with you. Uh, and again, you probably have seen them in past videos. Sorry that I'm turning my head away from you. But just for kind of that reboot sake, I'm going to show you again. Um, if you have watched a past video, and uh, you probably... Maybe you saw the one that I was talking that my husband and I went to Ireland last August. Had an amazing time. And when I was in Ireland, I found these four little kits um, that comes with, like, everything in it. It's got the floss. It's got the fabric. And I just thought they were adorable. And they would make nice little um, reminders of the trip. So there's this one. It says Nag, Nag, Nag on it. There's You Are My Sunshine. There's pretty maids all in a row. I think I'm going to stitch them, but not with the words. And my thought was I would stitch them all on the same fabric. And this is called hand wash only. Um, I would stitch them all on the same fabric, maybe with like a, a little Irish border or something around it. I don't know. To be continued on that. Love this little mouse. I think that's super cute. What is this? Oh, it's a Mill Hill Mouse Trilogy. Uh, Jim Shore, another little kit. Uh, Vanna Pfeiffer shows how to like finish these things. So maybe that'll be something that I do. Um, and watch her videos to learn to do that. There's a lot of people out there though that do a really good job at finishing. Which one is this? Candy Claws. Um, I'm not going to show that one because I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> Love these. This is Country Cottage Needleworks. So my husband's birthday is in May. Mine is in February. So I bought the May one. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. I just kind of figured that it's more of a reminder, a video reminder for me. And then February. So I thought I got one piece of fabric and I'm like, oh, I'll put February, May on it. And then we got married in October. So maybe I need to go buy back and get the October one. Um, a couple months ago, there was like this big uproar over Hobby Lobby, and Hobby Lobby was getting rid of all of their cross-stitch stuff, and everybody kind of was going crazy about it. 
um, and they had all the stuff marked off. So I decided to go into Hobby Lobby and I did find a kit. This is a gold collection and it was $45 and I got it for eight. And it's, I'm sure you recognize this because I've seen this a lot out there. It's a full kit with everything in it. A treasured time, it's called. Um, so those are all the projects in waiting that I've shared before. Um, but again, just a quick little review of, um, of what I've got. Now, I think I have a couple others. I showed you all of those. I don't need to show you those. We talked about it. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the stuff that I've purchased. So I'm getting, um, I'm on like Facebook Marketplace a lot more because you just never know what people are trying to sell. And I've been a little bit lucky. I've gotten quite a bit of fabric. I've shared that before. I've gotten more um, hoops and scroll frames and things like that. I figure, gosh, if you're selling it for $5 and it doesn't work out for me, what difference does it make? It's all good. Um, so I've gotten all sorts of different things like that. These are some of the things that uh, I've purchased since my last video. I can't wait to show you because then I can finally put them away. <laughs> I've been keeping them out here on my table for the last three months. No, I'm well, I gotta show everybody when I do my video. Um, so now I can put a, them away. In Hudson, Ohio, that's where Joanne Fabrics has their main headquarters and they have a nice big store there. So I went and checked it out when I was out in the area for work and I saw this and I just thought it was super cute. It's a gold collection petite. Maybe you've seen that before. I just thought that was really cute. I thought when I first got it that the fabric had this blue back in here, but it doesn't. It's just white fabric. So I guess all of this blue kind of background is, is stitched in there. So that'll go into a project in waiting. Um, for my birthday, a dear friend of mine gifted me with a, um, oh, darn dog, um, gifted me with a, an Amazon gift card. So of course I had to buy cross stitch stuff because I didn't have enough apparently. And I would like to do more ornaments. So anyways, I saw those. I thought this was really cute. It would be fun to have some stuff on my tree. And again, watching different floss tubers and how they finish their ornaments, I think I could probably figure out. And I saw these, I thought those were super cute. So what is this? I guess I should tell you that. This is a Dimensions one, this one. Dimensions, Christmas Pals ornament. This is a Dimensions 2 gold collection and it's Playful Snowmen. So those are all kits ready to go. Now on Facebook Marketplace recently, I saw um, somebody trying to get rid of some things and this is what I got from them. More ornaments. And I bought this kit for $2. What was it originally? I don't even see the original. Somewhere it was marked at $9.97 and $4.95 and, and they sold it to me for $2. And I thought those were cute. And then I saw this one and I thought this was really cute too. What is this? Christmas Traditions. I've never even heard of this company now. Designs for the Needle. Look how cute that Santa is. But I do know it's, in, for me anyways, it's really hard to work on this dark fabric. So again, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but... I got it and I thought it was a steal. So right after Christmas, I was watching a floss tuber and I can't remember um, who it was. I know we all follow a lot of different people um, and there's so many out there and, and it's great to do that. But somebody showed me or showed me, showed that they had this book, Heritage Village Collection. And this is cross stitch patterns for the Dickens Village series. And I was going to say that I'm a huge Charles Dickens fan, but really what I am, I'm a, I love um, the Christmas Carol, which is why I'm doing that Ebenezer cross stitch. But I thought, well, this, this might be fun. There's all sorts of different, let me see if I can find it. I collect the Dickens houses too for um, 
the holidays. So let me find one that's a picture and not a pattern. You know, like that. So this is nice. This will just kind of go on my, my bookshelf with all the other ones. Thought that would be fun. Um, and then last but not least, a bunch of different little magazines that I got, again, from somebody who was selling them, you know, like vintage magazines. I love how they, th they say vintage, and I'm actually older than some of these magazines, so I don't know what that says about me, but this um, was one of them, and I went through them and kind of marked some patterns of things that I liked. Um, let me see if I can find it really quick. The one on the cover, of course, the Christmas tree one. But these are just fun to have. Where is it? Well, I got, yeah, all of the ornaments. They have ornaments in there. So there's that one. There's one in here I was going to show you, and I don't want to take up a whole lot of more time. What are we at? Almost an hour. Wow. Um, but I, I got the magazine. I marked the page. And then after I marked the page, I saw somebody on Floss Tube stitching it. It might be this one on the cover. Look how pretty that is. I think the border on here is super pretty. So I think that was it. Wait, hold on. Oh, I marked this one. I just thought it was cute right there. It's another quick little ornament. So, um, I think that's it. Um, I've got, otherwise I won't worry about getting into some of these other ones because that was a lot to show already. But like I said, I'm excited about my plan. I hope it works out. Um, I have it kind of written in, written in the back of my little book, like each one of the weeks. And the I put little hearts by the ones that I want to finish. Um, I, again, I'm kind of using this book of days as like my own little, I don't know, diary, I don't know, visual diary of what I've what I've done, like in February, I put in here, you know, some of the stuff that I bought and, you know, some of the stuff that I'm oh, planning 2024. It's February was when I finally figured out my plan. And um, when I figured it out, I actually wrote in here, okay, I'm going to do a video on March 24th. And today's March 26th. So that didn't quite work out, but that's okay. So you figure two months from now is about May 19th. So hopefully... Um, if all goes well, I'll be back. I'll be able to share more progress and then I'll actually have something to compare it, compare it to because I just did a video. Oh, here, I'll show you one last thing because my daughter bought me these. So I have to show them off for Christmas. I have two daughters. My one daughter bought me some crochet stuff, but my other daughter bought me these super cute little needle minders. So there's a little flower market. And here's one that's a bookstore. <laughs> And last but not least, a little, oh, it's not going to focus very good, is it? Um, coffee shop. So, anyways, thanks so much for watching. I really enjoy watching so many of you out there. Um, I hope I get better at this at some point in time, but hopefully you enjoyed watching. And like I said, hopefully um, there's some things that... Um, that you enjoy watching or you enjoy stitching as well. I'm actually going to do one more thing. I lied. I'm going to do one more thing because I do want to call out a couple of my favorite floss tubers. Um, I already told you about stitching in the burrow because she does that um, Mama Kiss and Santa Claus. Just started watching CCL Stitches. She's newer to floss tube and she's fun to watch. Huga Stitcher, I told you about her. Um, and I know a lot of you, you know, um, probably watch her as well. Maybe you're participating in the um, Year of the Dragon Sal. Um, Handwork Maniac, I really like her. Um, Mischievous 
is she, which one is she? Miss, yes, Miss Abyss, oh my, I can't speak, Mischievous Stitches. She's fun to watch. Um, there's somebody that I just started watching recently, and I thought they usually come up the very top, but I guess that's it. Otherwise, I'm just um, blabbering. Oh, Busy Mother Stitcher. Is it? Yeah, Busy Mother Stitcher. So that's it. Um, again, thanks so much for watching uh, me just kind of blah, blab. Um, I hope that you will, if you aren't already liking the video, that you would and subscribe. And if you are a floss tuber, let me know who you are so I can check you out. If I'm not already following you, it's probably a good chance that I am. And I hope you have a wonderful day. It is the week of Easter. So if you celebrate, happy Easter to you. And uh, I hope to see you in eight weeks. Have a good one. Bye.